This is my fucking day. I wake up at fucking six in the morning and put oohoo <laughs> on my fucking head, gluing hair on it, just so I can walk in the fucking hair and see and you and your fucking face asking me if I want a fucking light. No, I don't want a fucking light, hey? <laughs> He gets angrier without changing his cadence. That was amazing. Kinda, right? yeah. Are we recording now? We're recording <laughs> now. I, just I am Simon that. King, and this is what's wrong. Um, this is a. It's been a week for you, but it's been moments for us. <laughs> moments, um, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. If you're not listening to the podcast, you could be watching the podcast and listening to the podcast. If you can't watch the podcast, uh, well, I, I can explain to you how phones work. I'll explain to you. Go on YouTube, <laughs> youtube.com uh, slash The Citizen Strange, and you will be able to see the amazing Peter Kalamis just because uh, when you listen to it, you thought, oh, that's Billy. I'm going to leave it blank until we come up. I'm going to leave it like dark <laughs> until I do it. It's just so people who think Billy Bob Thornton's here just getting weirdly mad at me for no reason. Like, why is he so angry? Like, uh, and just me whimpering for the entire time. He's a terrifying man. He is. Um, this is the second part of the uh, Peter Kalamis podcast. We liked him so nice, we brought him on twice. Uh, right. <laughs> because my Uber ride is late. Yeah, that's so. <laughs> what I like to call, uh, we have his wallet, and he's not leaving until he does another hour. Uh, so thank you so much for listening. Uh, please rate and subscribe and like the podcast. Put a comment on it. Put something nice. Put something nice. Say, hey, Mikey looks great. You haven't seen him. Actually, if you've gone on Patreon.com slash uh, This Is Simon King, you've seen Mikey. I revealed myself. You've yeah. seen you've seen yeah, what Mikey looks like, and ever. quite frankly, different than you think. Penis, weird place. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not Middle normal. Of the not normal. You know, <laughs> normally that's where umbilical cords go. Whatever, man. Live your life. <laughs> he wears his underwear high for a reason. Uh, <laughs> So what, um, uh, supercilious? No, we've already used that for you, haven't we? You used the word last episode that I thought would have been Vociferous. Vociferous, wow. Yeah. Vociferous, um, wow. Yeah. What does that mean? I don't know. I don't, like I said, it's a plant that he's made. <laughs> <laughs> no, vociferous, I don't know what a vociferous Sounds means. like a jellyfish. I think I knew before five drinks of bourbon, <laughs> but at this point I can't fucking tell you what vociferous means. Let's come up with another word I don't know. Um, uh, onomatopoeic. He is... <laughs> Mikey! Uh, <laughs> sounds like a morning show that nobody's listening to. Like we're doing it on some small Caribbean island. There's like one listener who just can't, is waiting in line to use the phone to call in and tell us we suck. Um, and our guest, our continued guest, our he, he, he never left. He's still here. Peter Kalamis, ladies and gentlemen. Peter Kalamis! Hey! What you don't know is that between uh, last episode and this episode, which has been a week for you, has been a few uh, moments for us, but we did get more drunk. So, you know, <laughs> we've been, been doing drinks. our job. Here in the, um, what shall we call it? I like to think of it as the tower studio, because we're in a tower yeah. that could mm. potentially people could die. The or suicide cloud. Suicide, oh, suicide cloud. The suicide cloud. That sounds like a oh, worse suicide cloud, and uh, we like uh, putting out music that makes people... <laughs> Cut themselves to feel something. <laughs> Sometimes I lick stamps to feel something. <laughs> just everything's to feel something. Sometimes I just open up my cupboard door and a bunch of stuff falls on my head like a Warner Brothers cartoon <laughs> just to feel something. <laughs> We're a suicide cloud. I wear pants that are one size too small just to feel something. <laughs> We were staying in a hotel called the uh, Suicide Cloud. So, uh, <laughs> you know, we wanted to uh, throw some TVs out uh, uh, the fucking window. And uh, luckily... <laughs> and, and, was and their bo- fucking flat opening, screens. Right? Fucking and, flat screen. and their fucking flat screens so they can go through yeah. the fucking window. So, I don't know why we're not Russell Brand. <laughs> The Russell Brand. Okay, so you know what we didn't do last episode, which we need to do, is, which we, we should do basically an entire episode of this because I think it would be fun. Is uh, Mikey? I think it's time. <laughs> Let's get <laughs> random. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a horn at a sports game or a, or a, a sand person from Star Wars. Have you ever seen my impression of a? Have you ever seen my impression of a Tuscan Raider doing stand up? No. Is the Tuscan Raider doing stand up? Just looks at his book. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I, give it up for the sand person. I used to do an impression of uh, it was uh, Empire Strikes Back when they went down to uh, Tatooine, mm-hmm. and um, uh, Luke is uh, in the just lands in the uh, swamp, mm-hmm. and he hasn't even met Yoda yet. And then R two falls off the X wing, and he's like, R two, R two. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then you see the the, ser- the serpent, and then he spits R2 out, and it's this. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. It's more of a, it takes longer to explain than the actual impression. Yeah, it's it's two seconds. And R2 does that in almost one each movie. Like that noise he does where he's in do trouble that or something. I love yeah. that noise. I, I did, uh, I did uh, Yoda in the swamp with uh, Luke Skywalker, but I overdubbed as Paul Giamatti as Yoda. Oh, Why don't Jesus. you get your X Wing out of my fucking swamp? <laughs> <laughs> just like it's like it's like you know, it's too hard to do this. Do it, uh, you listen, you fucking idiot. <laughs> it's, like, it's actually on my YouTube channel. You can look at it. It's Paul Giamatti is Yoda. Okay, this guy's a tourist, and it's just like trying to lift it out. He's like, oh, man. hell, this is fucking embarrassing. <laughs> Oh, I think Paul this. Giamatti would have made a great Yoda. Oh, my God. Do yeah. or do not, then, you know, there's no trust. He barely have to dress up. Oh, he really wouldn't have to. <laughs> Paul Giamatti up. has to do our podcast somewhere, right? <laughs> oh like, he God. has to do so it. Get him. We'll get him. Come on, Paul Giamatti. Come do the podcast. If he's on Cameo, we can at least get him out. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Paul Giamatti, just ask him random questions on Cameo. Random. One yeah. at a time. Well, I don't know why you want to know what my favorite marshmallow is, but I will tell you. <laughs> The more drunk I get, the less good my impressions get, but it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't fucking oh, matter. Oh, man. You can have Christian Slater as Yoda. Uh, um, uh, you know, why don't you try to get the X-Wing out of the swamp? <laughs> <laughs> I'm 900 years old. You know, you're never going to look as good as me. <laughs> Christian Slater always oh, sounds like he's uh, behind three doors when he's talking. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, way, way. He was the man for a decade. He, he, was. Was, he was. He was the man, yeah. you know. Yeah. When you run out of Jack Nicholson, you get a younger one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, let's do I, a- I used to do uh, Mickey, because Mickey Rourke, you got the oh. different uh, decades of Mickey Rourke. And I used to do uh, Mickey Rourke from uh, Angel Heart, uh, the movies. I don't like fucking chickens. <laughs> <laughs> what's your most... Um, what's your most... Uh, like if you do it now on the stage, the audiences are too young to get an impression. Because I had one, like that's oh. when I realized it was getting old. When I would do an impression, I was like, there'd be like four or five people my age that would like it. I'd be like, oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Christian Slater is kind of one of those, but he did come back with Mr. Robot. But I used to do obese Christian Slater. Like, right. you know, you can take all the good times you want at the old country buffet, and they want. <laughs> <laughs> did your eyebrows do the you impression I, uh, too? I got oh, a yeah. fanny pack full of ranch dressing. <laughs> Just the idea of just him dipping ranch dressing into his face. I, it, mine might be uh, Nicolas Cage because the, the young folk vaguely know who he is now. Yeah, we they grew just up, know him up when he was in his himself. heyday. Yeah, they just know him as and a parody himself. Yeah, and I think he should. Ju- I think this should be just like a YouTube channel of uh, just Nicolas Cage pronouncing uh, cities in California. Fuck just yeah. Rancho Cucamonga. <laughs> just, sound, just random, random. Escondido. <laughs> no reason. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'd watch that. I'd yeah, watch I'd that. watch that. That would be the kind of thing. Like, I watch those ASMR videos of people building cabins in the woods when I want to go to sleep and I can't sleep. But I yeah. would watch Nicolas Cage talking Nicolas about Nicolas Cage, it. just read a map. Have you ever seen, have you ever seen my uh, fat John Wick character? So no. it's, John, it's John Wick. John Wick retires, right? And then his wife dies and he's sat. So he just eats. He just eats and eats. And he gets to about 440. And then one day he's getting his he's getting his mobility van. And a Russian guy is like, what year is it van? Is it 68? Oh, it's a 68. <laughs> and then... He says something in Russian, and then he's uh, late at night. He's sitting on his couch, right? And this Russian guy brings. He's eating a hot dog. And they take his hot dog and they oh. throw his hot dog in the ground. <laughs> and then he gets all. He ta- oh he gets a scooter. He puts his suit. I'm gonna get this son of a bitch that ate my hot dog. John Wick is a man of extreme willpower. <laughs> Wheeling himself around, just mopping himself oh with a rag. Big bang, big. <laughs> Oh, and, we, yig. and we and we both do uh, Statham's Jason Statham because oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. my my angle on him was that uh, he can make anything sound uh, fucking threatening yeah. Yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. has yeah. no need to be threatening whatsoever like you know instructing somebody else to yeah. make a cup of tea yeah. here's what's gonna fucking happen here. <laughs> you're gonna boil some water and you're gonna put that water in a cup then you're gonna put that fucking tea bag in a cup and you're going to mix it around with a little spoon. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. You know what you're going to have there? A delicious cup of fucking tea. 
I'm fucking terrified of that. <laughs> mine was old. Mine was old. Senile. Jason said, "Do you know my favorite animals? My favorite animals the fucking turkey. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sound a turkey makes. It's a noble beast." <laughs> Oh, but but I realize describing. I realize that's really close to James Gandolfini. It's not James Gandolfini. It's like the you know my favorite animals, the fucking turkey. (laughs) That's like the same thing. Favorite desserts, the fucking (laughs) scrambled (laughs) eggs. I like how we were supposed to do a random and it's just Scrabble Lagoon. It's just Scrabble Lagoon. Oh, fucking, just, even the Italians have are like, played, we don't know what they say. Yeah. Have, have you ever played Italian it? Scrabble? It's Scrabble Lagoon de la Pinta la Guala. I used all of the tiles in the back. I used all of the vowels. It's Scrabble Lagoon de la Cali Buliki Bulukut. All of the vowels. All of the syllables. I have to order new tiles off eBay just to finish the game. huh? Holy shit. <laughs> How you don't know that word? Huh? That word is a very simple word. We use that word all the time. Huh? Oh. It means a bicycle with an extra seat for your dog. It's easy. <laughs> I like how both the oh, Jason man. Statham impressions, he's like just kind of describing something. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he, yes. He's just like, yeah. 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 <laughs> Maybe he should do a true crime podcast. <laughs> right. And then they found bits of his fingers everywhere. Holy Jesus fuck, Christ. So All right, funny. let's do a rant. Sure. I learned Sorry. some fucking Sri Ratcha sauce. <laughs> Just certain words you want to hear him do say. You want right? veg- do you want any veggies yeah. on your sub, or do you want any? Do you want olives, or? Let me tell you what's gonna fucking happen here. Okay. <laughs> just, they, like they're used to him coming in every day. Like no, and then it's just a, then it's just a roundhouse to the forehead. Just enough. Do you want any bread? <laughs> <laughs> Let me guess. You don't want cookies. Um, oh, all right. Fuck. What's your- What's your rant? I'll say this rant on the little on top. Yeah, uh, yeah. What is the worst plane trip you've ever taken? Ooh. Y'all ever see Con Air? <laughs> um, <laughs> for me, First it was uh, I was doing a gig with um, um, <clears throat> Toby Hargrave, yeah. and uh, we were being sent up to, uh, God bless you, sir. We were sent up to New Denver, uh, U- uh, New Denver, Yukon. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, Very yeah. Very small yeah, town. Yeah. yeah. And we go out, and uh, it's in the middle of winter. And we, we get out to the tarmac, and it's a small airport. Uh, you know, it wasn't the main airport. And it's a little, it's literally a four-seater. No, oh, she's uh, Sorry, right. six-seater, six-seater, yeah. Like a little Cessna sky and, and it's this really dorky pilot, because they kind of have to, um, it's a, yeah, welcome what's, what's the word when they book a flight? It's charter. A, a, it's a charter. Thank you. Uh, and it's this really dorky looking guy, right? <laughs> Younger, dorky looking guy. Yeah, welcome so aboard. <laughs> they put they 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 put Toby in Toby's like a hefty guy. They put him in the plane and the thing he, he goes to the back of the plane and the plane does this. <laughs> oh, no. It does a wheelie in the air yeah. and it's sticking oh, no. it's doing a forty five the tail hit the ground. <laughs> That's a fat guy's And the guy's there. like, oh, you guys gotta get out of there, you gotta get out you get him out of there. So they get they pull Toby out of there because he's too big. <laughs> And he starts pulling weight. He's trying to <laughs> trying to get the plane to weigh less, right? I swear to God. And then he puts Toby back in. <laughs> it does it again. It's doing a wheel. like, that's not going to be good for the tail when it's hitting yeah, the ground yeah, like that. What's that. going on? <clears throat> so he gets in there and he starts. He goes, yeah, hold on a second. So then he unloads all this shit, right? And then he finally puts his back in. Toby sits down and it's fine. Then I get in and we're fine. And then <laughs> it's a really shitty propeller plane. <laughs> As we're taking off, literally, we go. So, what did you, what did you ditch weight wise? And he goes, just the safety gear. <laughs> just the safety gear. I'm not kidding. And we're flying in the dead of winter. It's like 30 below. So then we're flying, and every time this guy was only just a little ways off the ground, we could see the ground fully. And every time there was a hill, he would like. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're three quarters of the way up there, and he goes, I know this is really. Good. I swear. I know this really good place that has crawlers. <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> there's, there's this, we can land there because there's this little cafe. <laughs> On what? And he goes, it's frozen. Don't worry about it. Like there's a frozen area of land next to a cafe three quarters of the way up the province. I love that there's a that cafe he stopped, there. Yeah, that he knows. Yeah. And we're like, no, no, no. We better just go. And then he's all pissed off. Ugh, just, I really wanted that. I want to go through the roller. I want to go through the fly through. Now he's angry. Like it, it's literally, it's like Rain Man pilot. Yeah, def, 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 definitely the crawler. Get behind the controls. 
Let's go. <laughs> wow. So we get up there. We do the show. It's a lot of fun. There's this guy who owns a Greek restaurant up there, and he knew I was coming. So yeah. he was like, I want to have these guys over the yeah. next day. And he put out like a full spread. He wouldn't take money from us. We just like wow. tipped the staff. He was so happy that I, I was there. I'm talking Greek to him. And it's just one of yeah. these... Uh, when people are just so kind sometimes when you go to yeah, a new the place, North right? Is like so the that kindness of strangers. Like, it really, yeah. really is. And then the next day we get up and uh, there's our pilot because he had to stay overnight as well and watch a show. No, um, we saw the show. <laughs> saw the show. And uh, first, oh, and I got to throw this into we're at a place called uh, uh, Gap Tooth Gerties. <laughs> okay. And their big claim to fame is they have the pickled toe. The pickled toe. The pickled toe. pickled toe. So it was a guy, one of their uh, explorers in the 1900s or something? Yeah. yeah 1910, like I don't know, something like the Polar Bush times. Got uh, frostbite on his toe. His toe fell off, so they put it in a bottle of, uh, I think it's vodka. I'm not sure. Probably. I think it might be. It's got to be something like something a whiskey very, or something. Yeah, fermented. Be... You know, and it was a clear one. Is it, oh, a clear one? Gin, maybe? I think, maybe? I think, so. I think yeah, it was a vodka. something like that. And they put, it's a human toe inside, and you, they pour you a shot of the human toe. Right, and you pay for that. Yeah, I'm not kidding. And they go, uh, so this is the original toe, and they go, no, no, somebody uh, drank it. <laughs> so there was some guy who came in, and there's a fine for drinking the toe. Yeah, there was a no, fine for enough. drinking yeah, the toe. No, Two hundred dollar fine. Two hundred dollar yeah. fine. Yeah. Enough of this shit. <laughs> Two hundred dollars. You got to the fine. Drink. So some guy apparently came in. He poured it so the toe fell out, and he shot it back, and then he slapped down two hundred dollars as a story. And then they had to find a new toe. So they he went, just drank they found, a toe. He drank the, drank the toe, and they found some cadaver somewhere, some medical site. Cut so the there's a off. new toe. So that's the that's where we played. And then his pilot and then, only had nine toes. <laughs> so we get back on, story. and now we're on a, fro- a frozen tarmac in New Denver, seeing if we can fly out. And he goes, oh, it's, uh, it's getting kind of cloudy out there. I don't know if we can do this. And we went. Yeah, we'll just fly the plane above the clouds. And he says, this is, we're already there. This is the next day flying back. He goes, yeah, but I'm on a learner's license, so I'm not allowed <laughs> oh, to shit. fly over the clouds. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you flew us here. <laughs> <laughs> so, All below clouds? So, yeah. Below clouds. Yeah. And me and Toby are taking like selfies together. This is going to be like the last yeah. Known shots of me and Toby. Did you guys, totally got the same thing here, you guys ever hear it's about gone. Kobe Bryant? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, geez, Similar weather. Oh my God. So the worse. entire time we're flying back, it was just now that we knew he wasn't allowed to get above a certain yeah. thing. Every time there was a hill. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus And fucking thank Christ. God that we made it back alive. And to this day, it was. I, mean, I have still have pictures of it of this pilot. And, oh, oh, and he goes, hilarious. first before we leave, I forgot this. He goes, oh, I got to de ice the plane. <laughs> we go, oh, he's going to have some sort of. Cap- he gets a step ladder with a scraper from Home Depot. And he starts <laughs> on the wings. That's his de icing. <laughs> so it's banging in baseball. Players. Yeah, that's it. It's fine. It's, it's like fine. one of those car scrapers. <laughs> <laughs> We're good. Are we? <laughs> Holy shit. So that's my favorite flight. I was flying. I don't know if this is my worst flight, but this is a pretty funny thing that happened. It wasn't actually when we were flying. We were flying. We were heading up to Sudbury, and we had to take a little Dash uh, 10 or whatever, like a little, little uh, yeah. twin engine thing. And we we're, get we're onto the plane on the tarmac. It's like late at night, and it's hot. It's in summertime. <clears throat> and there's a smell of fuel, like Avgas, like oh. just a strong smell of Avgas. And I'm like, well, I don't, look. I never finished my pilot's license, but I know that's not good. No. Like, I mean, no. I, I just as simply as a person who has a passing interest in combustibility, right. I know that that's probably not good. So we're sitting on the plane, and then, <clears throat> like, the smell of fuel is filling the plane. And we're like, this is not good. And then the pilot comes on and goes, ah, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are going to have to switch airplanes because uh, this airplane uh, has a technical issue uh, regarding paperwork. Motherfucker, it's not paperwork! I can't <laughs> smell paperwork! Right? And the guy's like, we're going to have to switch airplanes, so it's going to take a few minutes. And then we start oh, getting man. off, and one guy in the back's like, fuck this! Just fucking take off! I'm like, look, dude, I don't know if you understand how planes work, but if you can smell gas... <laughs> Yeah. Like that's not he was legit he was ready to go. I'm like, I think that guy should have gone. I think they should have given him the keys. If I could take it up, man. <laughs> the only other time that I had this was I was flying I was flying from Vancouver to, to to Toronto. And it was about halfway over Saskatchewan. Right, which is where you want to put down if you're running out of fucking you gas. Don't wanna, yeah. <clears throat> and I'm sitting Crash there. Land there. They will, they'll eat you there, no and the problem. Over, the overhead compartment in front of me starts, have food and starts food. to spew smoke. And there's smoke coming out of the overhead compartment, like between me and the seat in front. And it's like noticeable, and it smells like mechanical, like oh, something's man. wrong. 
Man. And uh, like I said, I'm no scientist, but I'm like, something's the fuck up, right? <laughs> and I'm in my le- my row by myself. And the, this, the flight attendant comes over. She goes, hi, how's everyone? How's everything doing? I'm like, great. And I'm like, she's like, would you like a drink? I'm like, no. And she's just like touching the thing. She's like, are you okay? I'm like, you want anything? I'm like, no, I'm good. She's like, okay, thank you. And then she just walks away. And I'm like, well, this is fucked. And then a little while later, maybe five minutes, the fucking co-pilot starts walking down the aisle. You never see that. If, if they're up there. No, and, when he, yeah. and he just walks down like he's just having a look around. He just starts talking to people. Sorry, you guys. Going to take a ship. Going, going to Toronto? Hope All you right. Enjoying your flight. And he comes over to me and goes, how you doing today, sir? And I go, great. He goes, okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. You know, it's uh, pretty great. You know, that prairie out there, that's a lake out there. And I was like, yeah, he's just touching the thing. And he goes, okay. And he just walks back. He's like, well, have a great flight enjoy yourself and then the flight attendant comes back over she goes yeah so just and she just opens the compartment oh, she's like, just like, like act, I'm like motherfucker I know what's up right and she looks at what it was was I guess someone's vape pen exploded <laughs> Wow. And so wow. whatever that was or something happened that there was a mechanical sort of <laughs> reaction smell and then fumes coming up. But everyone in the plane knew what the fuck was going on. And when the co-pilot acts all cool, like, he's like, oh, it's cool. It's like, don't worry about it, buddy. It's like a guy with a DUI is like getting out of the car drunk. He's like, hey, hey, everything's great. It's the weekend. <laughs> it's like, dude, you're going to Like, you know you're going to jail. I got two other plane stories. Neither yeah, one yeah. of them happened to me, and they're not mine, but they both make me howl. <laughs> one of them was our, our, we had a, 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 me and my wife, a mutual friend, Jay Battershill. And he was, uh, he was from Seattle, uh, about 10 years older than me. And really, he was a little bit too loud, but he was like the funnest guy ever. You know, would always... <laughs> Ordered great feel scene. Order, order. <laughs> no, but like, he'd always order like a fantastic bottle of wine at a restaurant and make the waiter who brought it over sit there and have a glass with him. And he, was one of these really, he was always a really fun yeah. guy, right? Yeah. And funny stories. So we're like, uh, one time he was flying from Seattle to like Miami, like the the, the longest trip on the mainland of the states yeah, yeah, that you yeah, can yeah. make, right? So he goes, uh, yeah, Jay, how, uh, you flew, how was your flight? And he goes like, oh, yeah, so... Uh, I'm in first class. It's just like me on one side and this other woman on the other side. That's it. And it's a midnight flight. It's a red eye. We're like, yeah. And he goes, yeah. And uh, I just had this gas ball. And I just, <laughs> I just let her rip thinking it's not going to be too bad. No, it's no. Just living hell came out of me. <laughs> so literally Satan in the gas form came out of Jay. And, and all of a sudden, he the woman at the other side, all of a sudden, boom, boom, <laughs> calls Stewardess home. <laughs> Stewardess comes over and she goes, is everything all right, ma'am? And she goes, no. <laughs> there's, there's some sort of gas leak on this plane. <laughs> so what does the waitress do? Walks up and then the aisle is going, <laughs> Oh, God. Basically vacuuming up his fart with her face. And then she goes, yeah, you're right. There is a gas leak on here. And we're oh like, what did God. you do, Jay? And he goes, just pretended to be asleep. Jesus Christ. And he, he had just had to ride it up. Oh, my, my other one is, this comes from another comic, uh, jo- Johnny Bagpipes Johnston. Oh, Johnny Bagpipes. Great guy. Great guy. Person? Let, yeah, he's, yeah, a, yeah, he's yeah, a bagpipes yeah, comedian. Yeah, he's and he's from the island. Comic, he's a legend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like the funnest guy yeah, in the world. Sounds so like, yeah, that's awesome. Um, he plays like Van Halen's Eruption on his bagpipes. That's <laughs> yeah, his, like, his finale. Yeah. Like, he's like, he's great to watch. That's amazing. Uh, so he told me a story once because me and him were saying, yeah, you know, we, I, I always get kind of bloated up in a plane. And, you know, when I land, it's like you got to unleash some <laughs> pressure, right? So he goes, oh, yeah, me too. And he goes, oh, God, one time. <laughs> He's flying to Calgary and he lands. <laughs> he goes, he goes to the. He goes, I got a huge gas ball. I just, I, just, I, I didn't have any. I was too many people gas around. He goes, I, I get to the uh, car rental place and I go, oh, yeah, I got a car waiting for me. He goes, yes, sir, Mister Mister Johnson. He goes, in a, in a, a stall number or something, and, and and you just go over there and get the car. And he goes, yeah, yeah, okay, great, thank you. So he goes, he walks over and uh, there's the car. He opens the door, he gets in, and he goes. He goes, he just, I unleash hell. Just, <laughs> <laughs> and then he uh, goes, God, that's better. And then he puts the uh, key in the ignition and won't start. And then he looks to his left and he sees some guy walking towards him, dangling a key. <laughs> <laughs> and he's in the wrong car. <laughs> 
And he goes, he just kind of creaks the door open because he doesn't want to roll down the window. And the guy goes, oh, that's my car. And he goes, no, no, no. <laughs> you don't want this car. And he goes, why not? And he goes, I don't know, somebody hit something, killed an animal or something. And he goes, oh, wait a second. The guy opens the door, sticks his head in. <laughs> Jesus, yeah, that's bad. <laughs> so they go back to the office. It's like the poor Hertz guy, right? Yeah. He goes, what can we help you with, gentlemen? He goes, yeah, well, we got a problem. This guy can't find his car, and mine tent smells like shit. <laughs> so they get, send Johnny to the car he's supposed to get into, and he goes, as I'm pulling out, he looks up, and it's the guy that sucked up the fart, and he's been upgraded to, like, an Escalade. <laughs> and he drives out a lot. One of the best airplane stories I ever heard, and it's not my story, is uh, Billy Mitchell. Yeah. Back when there was Greyhound Air, very briefly, oh, man. in the early 90s. <laughs> one plane crashed? They just, <laughs> yeah, they decided to do a great... First of all, Greyhound shouldn't be doing flights. No! Because I don't know if you've been on a Greyhound, but that, that shit shouldn't be moving. No. Like, you shouldn't be taking filth from one city to they another. They haven't conquered the ground. Yeah. They no, shouldn't they don't. Like, the if there was a Greyhound parking lot, <laughs> I would think twice about <laughs> Yeah. Even a car. Would you have a Greyhound valet? No fucking way. No. And so no. what they decided they were going to do was because uh, they thought this would be a genius idea, and like I guess the mid '90s or whatever it happened was they were going to have comedians on the plane. And oh, Billy Jesus. is a clean comedian, and he didn't oh, want to do it, but they paid him an exorbitant amount and gave him free flights. And they're like, "Look, we'll fly for." So he's going to Calgary doing a gig, and they're like, "What you got to do is you got to do comedy on the flight for 20 minutes." And he's like, all right, how bad can it be, right? So he's like, they take off, they're in, they get up to cruising altitude. Bing, bing. And he gets up oh, and he no. walks up to the, nobody announced what's happening. Oh, no. He's just a passenger <laughs> who walks up. Uh, so my wife is uh, <laughs> oh, on a plane. My, this oh, is, my God. The baby's crying. Oh, it's my, my, it's my face. Oh, and my he God. Does, 20 fucking minutes. They're serving peanuts. They're going <laughs> by him. And then he just walks. No laughs. Now just walks back and sits back down. Does his time. Goes to Calgary. <laughs> does the show. Has to do the same fucking thing on the way. <laughs> that was literally the only flight they ever had comedy on. Oh Graham there. God. Billy Mitchell. God, one time years ago um, at the uh, Cobalt Hotel. Which oh, used the to Cobalt. Really it, it's it, let's face it it's, it's a dirty grungy strip bar and, <laughs> right, and okay. on main street I and okay to film it's a been there, there for forever and they closed right before i filmed it <laughs> yeah so at the time um they had i think i think it was a stripper duo called like the chicklets who would you know fire ping pong balls and things like this and then the the vancouver police got wind of this they caught the show and they got charged for indecency and they shut the whole at the stripper cobalt at the cobalt. places so they said they, they lost their stripper license for like a month so what do they do go to the comedy club and say this is this will be a great second option oh no so uh it was jerry owens uh, God rest his whole. Uh, and Jerry uh, was the guy that calls me. And goes, hey, listen here, Dad. They want to hire us at the call out there to tell jokes. That, that's those strippers there were just uh, firing things out of themselves, and they did. Now they want to uh, come in there and tell jokes. Sure. So in we go, and uh, it was this guy, really shady guy. I think his name was King, and he's like, okay, go in there and do the show. So we get up there, we we do the show, and it's horrible. Yeah, it's where people would come in. <laughs> You know, people from out of town that didn't know that they had lost their stripper license. Yeah. And they see a bunch of, like, you know, comedians and jeans and sneakers coming up. Like, hey, how's everybody? Anybody from out of town? We want to see boobs. We yeah, want to see yeah, boobs. Yeah. So we, we got through. There was, like, a whole bunch of us there, and then we had planned out the whole month. And uh, we lasted. It was, like, uh, 45 minutes, I think it was. And the guy's like, yeah, you got to give me a break. And then Jerry Owens suddenly became tough guy. He goes, hey, listen here. The only break you're going to hear is your fucking arm if you don't give us our money. Why <laughs> <laughs> is this big, Jerry? <laughs> I think he paid us for the day and then we called it a deal. <laughs> so, okay, that's good enough. Dude, so I think we all yeah. made like 90 bucks. And Stand up does not belong in most places. Like, most no. people don't realize it. No, they no. think because it's just because it's like you can do it with a mic and a light, and like they basically they think you can put stand up anywhere, but you fucking can't. Oh, and you sometimes can't. the corporates are, oh my God, sometimes the intros you get. I remember doing one at a golf course once. It was the middle of the day, drove out to the valley, and you know, it was like an hour to get there, and it was a midday golf tournament. Yay. Uh, but it was for <laughs> like, 
people who had had uh, I forget the, what the affliction was it cancer or something it was a very horrific uh, cancer of the sense of humor <laughs> no but dangerous. just and they go I said you know when am I up and uh, they go oh, so and so is going to do a few words and then she's going to introduce you I was like great mm-hmm. it wasn't just a few words it was her son had passed away and he had gone through this horrific experience and she took us through the entire experience oh my you know God. I, 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 there, I'm, and I'm not even trying to be funny because it's a horrific loss but it was like literally from, years from, of a, from suffering a, that's exactly that is exactly what we're saying and then he lost the use of his ears you know and, and she went down the, the end, list he of could only how his wishes to die and but horrific. as a mother I could not do that it that is exactly what she did and then at the very end she, and then he passed away on March 12th please welcome Peter Kalani <laughs> I swear that's what it was, and then I, I was like, I could, I was like, I don't even know what I did. I, did, I got through the show. I was just like, okay. How's, how's everyone, everybody? How's everyone, how's everyone who's still alive yeah. doing tonight? That was really good shrimp. I, I, I don't know if anybody had the shrimp on that buffet, but that was I, some of the best shrimp I've had in my I life. I did a restorative justice conference. Yeah, how do you come back from that? I did a restorative oh, justice conference God. once. Really? And uh, I was hired at the last minute as an MC for this restorative justice conference. And it uh, and uh, I didn't know what it was going in, and I fucking found out. And oh, uh, oh. first of all, I showed up, and they're like, you don't have a suit? And I was like, I wasn't told I need a suit. I was like, literally, I didn't know what this was. Right. And they're like, okay, well, we'll make do. And I was like, what the fuck is going on here? Oh. And it was a three-day thing of people telling some okay it was counselors and and outreach workers and police officers and then felons telling the worst things they've ever done wow. and and like shit that doesn't make the news because they want you to keep watching the news can, like, can i guess like, what this the, was this is what your show was like this is the worst thing i've ever done and I, I would, I was supposed to MC, and she's like, you know, just make it light. I'm like, how the, f-? and I go oh, up, and the guy's like, God. and then uh, I put all of them in the trunk, <laughs> and I locked the trunk, and I drilled one air hole, and they thought it was for air, but when the water from the lake came in, it's like Jesus fuck, and then it was just terrifying thing after it was like literally living in a true crime co- and then it was so bad that like I was trying to make jokes I'm like hey you know was, hey man uh, I'm really glad to be here they took my uh, my shoelaces and belt at the door <laughs> but nothing and then <laughs> just like trying to make jokes right and then the <laughs> The hardest bomb, which I personally thought was the best, was they gave this cop this lifetime achievement thing. And he sounded like a really great guy. What he'd done is he spent his entire career doing this outreach to small communities, helping people who might have gone to jail rehabilitate themselves and not go. He was a fucking great guy, right? But unfortunately, when he received this award, his speech was like 15 minutes long. And I'm not fucking exaggerating. It was like, and when I um, first showed up in the (laughs) community... They didn't, um, and this is after yep. six hours of rape, murder, <laughs> arson. Like I'm not kidding. Like exciting shits happened, and then you get. And uh, when I got my first squad car on the side, I wrote uh, oh, "Hope man. Patrol" because that's what I do. And so, <laughs> I'm not kidding. I, I think, <laughs> I think you gotta get the kids young to help them not become. Uh, felons. <laughs> so I went up after him and was like, ladies and gentlemen, I think we can all consider that speech time served. <laughs> oh, no, man. nothing, nothing except in the back of the room, the woman who booked me. <laughs> oh, she was a pregnant lady who was nine months pregnant, faked pregnancy problems to get the fuck out of there. Like, made me drive her oh, back man. to Calgary. She's get like, we're in Bath. She's like, she's like, do you want to leave? I'm like, yeah. She's like, I, I've. Uh, so, wow! Like, literally threw down hard. God bless and she's her. like, "Pack your shit, God get in the car." It's like, "Fuck, you're the best." And she's like, "Yeah." She's like, "Drive my car to the airport. I'll get someone to pick you up." And I was like, "Holy fuck!" It was so, dude. And it was such a great cause, but it yeah. was such a wrong fit. Yeah. And the whole time they're like, "Just be funny." I'm like, "Do you understand what's, what's happening what's here?" Happening here. Like it's like, oh, here's all this Auschwitz footage. Make some roast them. Like it's like, yeah. hey, oh, I haven't seen Heckle that many. Uh, hey, look at that. Uh, look how skinny you are. Eh? What are you on French? Okay, everybody. Like, just like the worst, just the fucking worst feeling. And, and you're supposed to be funny, and like, I can't. I'm, I'm also affected. I'm still a human. I just heard about this guy drowning three babies. I might have to take a break.
Sorry. <laughs> Let's take a breather here. And he's telling the truth. Oh, no. It's not like he's just like talking shit at a party. Yeah, I drown babies. Like he's just like <laughs> I drown babies. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> fuck. Ye- years ago, there was a a, a comedy uh, course that was taught out of Texas called the Comedy Gym, and it was. Um, oh, I remember this. Yeah, it was. A, it was a couple people there uh, that came up, and they were teaching this course in Vancouver. Uh, it was an eight week course, and at the end. Uh, at the end of eight weeks, you did a performance in front of a live crowd. So you worked on your material, and that was it. You did a um, performance so for the gym. Yeah. So they, <laughs> they, they, yeah. So they uh, contacted me, and they said, will you be one of our instructors for the course? I was like, uh, yeah, this sounds kind of fun. I haven't taught comedy before, yeah. per se, but I, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, and then one of the exercises I came up with, I said, listen, on stage, uh, you guys can, you can create any situation. Like, if you can create relatives, you can talk about, do a joke about your brother. You don't even need to have a brother. Right. As long as you sound convincing, they will believe you. Yeah. Right? So you can write anything. Don't feel no constraints of what you can write. Right. So here's the challenge I want you to tell three very quick stories. Two of them are going to be uh, false, and one's going to be true. And we have to pick which one, after you tell the stories, which one is the true one. Oh, sick. To, to show how convincing that's you can good, be. That's a good right? thing. Yeah. And there was one guy. <laughs> There's one guy that took the course. He was around like the east end of Vancouver. And he was rough around the edges. Nice guy, but really rough, right? <laughs> and uh, I remember introducing him and said, hey, I won't even mention his name because he might be listening. Because I'm not trying to hack on him, but this is the story that made me howl. I know both listeners. Yeah. He's not one of them. <laughs> I said, I said, I said okay. Mikey's one of them. I just said, uh, hey, you're up. And he goes, this is what this, I'm, to, to, I'm trying to remember it to the word, but this is very close. He goes, okay, here, I got three stories here. Um, uh, first one is... Um, uh, my uh, ex-wife, uh, you know, she uh, was trying to get in the apartment, and she had kicked me out and uh, changed the door lock. So I went into the uh, alley, and I uh, beat the shit out of myself, right? I'm bleeding and shit, and I uh, knocked on her door, and she's like, what do you want? I told you to leave, and I said, look at me. I got beat the shit out of And she goes, opens the door, and then I fucking grab her by the neck and start to strangle her. <laughs> Story number two is... Um, I'm going in for a haircut, right? And uh, this is an old buddy of mine, Smokey. Eh? And I told, I tell Smokey, I said, just a little bit off the sides. I want the top a little longer. Eh? And and then I'm uh, talking. I'm not paying attention. Then he, he he pulls the towel away, and then he left put put weight cut way too much off the top and left the sides longer. So I just fucking beat the shit out of him. Right? <laughs> um, third story is. Um, yeah, so some guy took my uh, parking spot front, and I, uh, I said, hey, that's my spot. And he said, no, it's not. It doesn't look like it's your spot. And I just waited for him to, to, to open up his door and then beat the shit out of him. <laughs> <laughs> so which one's true? <laughs> I gotta go we with were, the we uh, all, ex-wife. We were mortified. Yeah, was, no, the, ex-wife. the ex-wife story was yeah. the true one, <laughs> and we were all like, "Okay, yeah, yeah, let's move yeah, yeah, on yeah. to." Yeah. Holy shit! Improv. Dude. <laughs> wow. Well, I think that buttons up that airplane <laughs> question. Uh, let's do another <laughs> random. Is that where we started the airplane yeah, question? We did. Wow! Look at us go. Well, Holy so shit! This is a fun podcast. All right. Uh, What's a major mistake you've made that nobody, that very little or nobody knows of? I took the comedy gym in uh, 1996. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What's a major mistake that nobody knows of that we're going to broadcast? Or very little. Or very like, few a people know A big know. mistake that very few people know. Yeah. Hmm. That's, uh, that's interesting because it's like there's certain, like, I mean, when it comes to comedy, there's certain mistakes you make that only comedians would know and that regular people wouldn't know. Right. Like they just simply wouldn't know that you've made a mistake, right. but I mean I think that that's a like, little subtle. Yeah, it's more subtle. I think this is, well, whatever. More broad. Broad, like something you've a mistake you're embarrassed of that you don't that share nobody often, knows of or very little. Like you don't uh, share. It often. I did a podcast. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you got a Clearly, suicide window. Slip nobody out. knows of it. <laughs> we have uh, all three listeners are in the same room. <laughs> She's the yeah, actually, true is a three because Lindsay I don't listen to it. Okay. I uh, I can't listen to it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time I'm like, Jesus Christ, dude, just do your own voice. Um, <laughs> ah, that's hard. That's, that's a hard. One. What is the thing I that no people don't know about? Because I mean, like everyone knows I killed that family, but I mean I did, but I did that because they took my parking spot. So mm. it's like you know what I mean. Mm. Like you got to kill the whole family. This question is designed for you to confess about it. Here's the thing. I'll tell you this right now, guys. Don't leave witnesses. All right. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's watching this. Um, yeah. What? What? 
mistake I, I if don't, I'm, I don't know what mistakes I'm, I'm pretty I don't know I'm pretty impervious to mistakes I've pretty much done everything right <laughs> That's oh, one, one right time there. this um, one time I uh, I don't know how did this story go? I was um, I had moved into a newer place and I I called um, this gal that I knew at the time. I think I was trying to date her. I think and um, uh, she was like, "Oh yeah, I'll, I'll pick you up later." And she's like, "Well, no, I can come there." And then she's like, uh, "What's your what's your address?" I was like, "Um." Yeah. And I didn't, I, I didn't know what the address was. Like I, pan- <laughs> I, I, like I panicked. I panicked, and then I ran. I go, oh, just hold on a sec. And then I ran, and I got a piece of mail, and I, I go, oh, this, yeah, this is the address. And I don't know. It's, much, it's almost like she was fucking watching me. She goes, did you just get a piece of mail and read the address off the piece of mail? <laughs> I went, no. <laughs> and that was the end of that. Um, I don't know, like mistakes that I've made that, like. I mean, there's so many. <laughs> um, not a lot of people know about. Um, oh, God. It's hard to think about, too, because it's mm-hmm. like, usually those files are sealed, but there, <laughs> aren't that many, really... but there aren't that many files, right? Like, mm. I really, honestly, I'm a very honest guy. Yeah. So, like, if I fuck up, I'm pretty honest about it. Like, That's true. Um, I, I, if I stole or, or yeah, I never, I, I went out of my way to hurt somebody, just my upbringing is uh, this, uh, the Greek guilt would yeah, kill me. Guilt, yeah, I can't, I can't. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was time, inbreded I've only me. stolen one thing once by accident. I've literally yeah. only stolen one thing once by accident. It was, it was, it was camping years ago, and uh, we were in, like, Porta Cove. Mm-hmm. And we didn't have anything to start the fire with, and I was like, "Well, I got to go to Squamish. I'll go to Squamish, get some camp. I'll get some firewood. Right. I'll get some fucking something to start the fire." And my lady friend's like, "All right." And I went up to Squamish and went to Seven Eleven, and I, I bought some. I bought a bunch of firewood because they had a bunch <laughs> of firewood there, and I bought some snacks and stuff. And then at the last minute, I saw free local newspapers. I was mm-hmm. like, "Oh, I'll just fucking take a bunch of these, right?" And then uh, when I get back to the campsite, I see a fifteen cents. I was like, "Oh, fuck." I stole like forty five cents worth of newspaper. <laughs> oh, I literally felt bad about that for about eight months. <laughs> like I'm such a fucking Pollyanna. For all the punk rock fuck the system that I am, I'm terrified of stealing anything by accident. <laughs> I don't wanna hurt feelings or steal shit. But I also have this weird side of me where I'm like remarkably vicious. Right. Like I was I think I said this before, like I, I'm not good at violence, but I feel like if I put myself into it I'd probably be pretty good at violence. <laughs> like I feel like it's something I could get into. Like right. I'm Oh, this is a hobby, yeah. like m- like murdering. Like, that's a thing. I don't Actually, know. Have you, Mikey? Have you got anything that you think about that you? Well, I have a mistake that most of my old friends know, but none of my new friends might know. Okay, well, make some new friends. Well, what did I do? I guess I was in my early twenties. I was blackout drunk. I went oh, for home. a second there. I was, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> well, basically, I got blackout drunk and I stole my dad's car. I was in oh, my twenties, but oh. I didn't have a license. And I went to go pick up weed. Oh, which is shit. What you do at two in the morning. And I already got kicked out of a bar. I fell asleep at a bank in Montreal because it was snowing and I yeah, needed yeah. warmth. Someone woke me up, drove me home. Uh, I went to bed and I was like, I need weed. So I woke up, stole my dad's car. Uh, I remember the song I was listening to, Gwen Stefani's Sweet Escape. Woo! Yeah. Woo! I was driving in the snow and I swerved and I fucking crashed into a pole. Oh my uh, god! Total half of it. I'm like, I'm just going to pretend nothing happened. How do you total half of something? You total drive up on like, uh, well, fine. How about this? I didn't think I totaled it, but I drove it home. But in retrospect, it was undrivable. Oh, okay. So I'm going. Wow. So I, you're a hero. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so I drove it home, and then I was like, I'm going to hide this from my dad. How am I going to do this? <laughs> I'm going to fake a break in. So I'm going to, and I'm wasted. I'm blackout. So I call my best friend at the time, who made it to the bar, got kicked out of. And I'm like, you're going to smash the... I, is this illegal? Anyways, uh, you're going to smash the window. I'm going to be in bed. My dad's going to wake up and be like, oh, my God, someone broke into my car. So That's pretty smart. I pass out. He breaks the window. Nothing happens. Except 9 in the morning, I hear it. Mike, what happened to the car? I'm like, well, I, I wake up. I'm like, what the fuck happened? And the window smashed. He calls the cops. They investigate. And... My dad's like, what happened to the car? I'm like, I don't know. What happened? He's like, well, did you take it? I'm like, no, I don't know what happened. And then the cops come. They investigate. They're like, we think it's your son. They're like, why? Because like, no one breaks into a car and sits on broken glass. So I got my friend oh, to break into the window. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, yeah, and then, yeah, yeah, and then, yeah, yeah. I had to lie oh. for about eight months. 
My dad almost sued ICBC, and then I had to confess, and then that was it. Wow. Yeah. Oh, how did you take it? Not what? Well, uh, he was going to sue ICBC. He's like, you wouldn't lie to me, right? I'm like, no. Then, yeah. And then, uh, oh, he didn't take no. Well. No. And then that's the stopped lying the worst. The yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm not a good liar. I'm never. I'm very not very good at lying. Or maybe I am, and that's a lie. I just feel like I just revealed I'm a horrible person. No, you that didn't was like really. 20 years no, ago, no, I lied no, for you, a year. You and, revealed uh, that you made a mistake. Yeah. That's a mistake, mistake right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like that time I stole all that nuclear material. Anyway, what's the next question? <laughs> Uh, this was a little more simple. That slip. It's like, yeah, I was an assassin uh, in the 90s. Anyway, um, what? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows about it. Uh, what is your favorite movie soundtrack? Ooh. Um, I have the favorite, but... You know what? Blade Runner is something I'll put on, like, ah, yeah, 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 where it's yeah, just, yeah, you yeah, kind of... Yeah, yeah. I'm not even... I'm not a big pot guy or whatever, no, but, but it's but like, it, even if you did like that stuff, and it's yeah. like... That'll just put you in a state of mind that is just almost like tran- tranquil beyond belief. It's a good sound. The original though, Blade Runner? The yeah, original yeah, yeah, Blade yeah, Runner, yeah. Yeah, 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 the first that one. There's yeah. just a. Uh, Ridley just Scott. Very yeah. just. Uh, it's not, not creepy is the word. It's just uh, hypnotic. Ethereal. Hypnotic. Yeah, it's, it's like. It's, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a, it like surrounds you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a good one. What about you, Mike? I, uh, I'm not a really big soundtrack guy. I'm trying to, I guess, like, um, of all Batman about- Forever, Kissed by the Rose was the last soundtrack that, like, you're talking more movie scores, but, like, anything Hans yeah. Zimmerman I'll yeah. listen to. I mean, Thomas thing. Newman stuff I love. Like, so American Beauty, those kind of things, like Thomas Newman's soundtrack. Like, yeah. if you're yeah. talking about a full soundtrack, mm-hmm. Thomas Newman I've always liked, and uh, I think that, like, that guy got his due in the early 2000s, but then it went away, and I, I do think that he... he but I, I think movie soundtrack... Uh, have you heard Ass Invaders 4? It's <laughs> yeah. the the wah wah. It's pedal. the jazz. <laughs> it's the jazz <laughs> beat. Yeah, I already I already watch porn for the soundtrack. I don't give yeah. a fuck about the visuals. Yeah. But I'm just like this music is good. Like this is John Williams' yeah. nephew, and <laughs> he played. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but that's just, Ed Williams. I bet you there's a podcast where the people review porn soundtracks, but not the, just the music. It's, it's like music. let's just listen to the music from porn soundtracks. Yeah. <laughs> All right, it's Big Bottom Blasters five, and quite frankly, it's better than Big Block and Blasters four. And, and I know that people, I know people get argue that? with. And, 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 <laughs> First of all, Dead Mouse does a cameo, which I think is amazing. Okay, so Dead, just Dead Mouse doing porn. <laughs> um, yeah, soundtracks to movies. Like, it's funny because it used to be that like one band would do all of it, right? Like yeah. Duran Duran or something would do the whole movie, and then now it's like switched around. You oh, know, another Pan really Pan good Pan one Pan. is uh, Garden State. I thought Garden State's was got a good soundtrack. A yeah, really yeah, good yeah, one. yeah. I do like um, Good Will Hunting. I like Elliot Smith and all that ah, stuff. I do like that yes. stuff. But I mean, I like that. You know, it's a tragic death, steak knife to the chest. You yep. know, like that, yeah. right? Nice, nice, yeah. That kind of rhymed. I could almost, <laughs> that could almost have been if Edgar Allan Poe was like an emo musician. And and, um, and, and the Pulp Fiction ones are, you know, the, 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 a lot of the Tarantino <laughs> ones are really <laughs> cool. That was the Yeah, all of that. <laughs> I like and even the, just spontaneously acapella and, street, and even the Kill Bills, like there's like Tarantino does have the skill of finding these obscure things that yeah sometimes Urge you've overkill. never heard of, but you think you've heard of them, yeah. and they're yeah. like really eclectic and awesome. He's and, the first one that made like soundtracks relevant to me. Yeah, the first time my sisters yeah. would buy like Nancy Brown. Sinatra and stuff, and it was like he threw like really cool Jackie things Brown. in there. Jackie Brown, great soundtrack. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, it's like, it's like, I think, I think the, I like when one band does a whole movie. Yeah. Like, I like when they commit to a movie. Like, it's like, this is the people who are doing this movie. Didn't Prince do the Batman soundtrack? He pretty much did, yeah. yeah. yeah oh, he pretty much that's did. right. Yeah, he did Batman, and yeah, it was right. pretty fucking great. That's sick, Prince man. was pretty dope. Like, was, yeah. people don't Until he realize... died off dope. Right? That, that Thank you. Up. Sorry. Uh, all right. Oh, this is what it sounds like so when I'm <laughs> Um. Uh, all right. I. I don't. I think that's. I mean. I can't cover any more movie soundtracks than that. No. That's I mean, it. Yeah. Uh. We got about ten minutes left. Do, do you want to yeah. do another one? Should we ask you You're... about what's your best Steven Seagal story? Oh, oh man. Steven. Se- <laughs> what's your so, best? What's your best Steven you Seagal story? Off, so this one. Um. <laughs> yes, yes, a buddy of mine. Story. About, if you uh, if you talk to stuntmen or or crews around Vancouver that have done Seagal movies, they all have extreme Seagal stories like one thing is he loves hurting uh, stuntmen 
<laughs> cool. Legitimately <laughs> breaking their arms and stuff like that. And there are cool. a lot of stuntmen either won't work with them or some of them have knocked him out. I was going to say, like, do people kick the shit out of him? Because I don't well, think he's that there's good. there's one story <laughs> I where... I feel like he's not that good. No, there's one story where I, I, I heard, I don't know the exact individual involved, but he was a, a veteran stuntman, and I guess Mr. Seagal started beaking off to him, and he knocked Seagal out, and Seagal pissed himself. <laughs> oh, this that's the sto- This is the story. <laughs> that's Like, amazing. literally pissed himself in a puddle of piss That's the worst and reaction then and then he woke up and ran uh yeah. and the old guy was like don't you fuck with me just you know one of these old gritty yeah. stuntmen <laughs> um but the best story i ever heard was a friend of mine's doing a movie with him and <laughs> and uh he's working with him and uh it was like friday he's working with him on friday right and he already had kind of a weird relationship with him not much conversation and then he shows up to, uh, to work on Monday, and he's like, hey, uh, Stephen, how was your uh, weekend? He goes, pretty good. Went on a mission. <laughs> it's like, what are, you, what are you talking about, mission? <laughs> Afghanistan. <laughs> like, what? Wait a minute, you, you went from New West on Friday night to Afghanistan and back on a Monday morning? How did you cover that kind of ground? We fly at night. <laughs> That makes the distance less. That can that s- it converts space and time. Going at nighttime. Jeez, I'm gonna go to Australia t- at three in the morning because I'll be back by five. Um, I think that I think Steven Seagal's got to be a flat earther though. Huh, like he's got to be a flat earth guy, right? I don't know if it's this earth, but yeah. it's somebody's a earth. A whole new level. Who do you think the dumbest celebrities are? Like if you have to pick the, if you have to pick the three dumbest celebrities you can think of. I think Kardashians probably got the top two out of the three, or just or maybe all three. Yeah. You know, you know. Sure, they're rich. Know they're sure they're that, rich and all yeah. that. Uh, you know, but you can't equate richness to being no, intelligent no, because a lot, there's a lot of stupid people who make a lot of money. Yeah, and um, you know, they may do some good things with their money, but then they take you know, seventeen minute flights. Across the uh, city. You know, oh my Jesus! You know, uh, shit like that. And then Drake said that he's like, he's like, he's like, yeah, my, my, they were mostly empty. I was like, that doesn't make it better. <laughs> that makes no, it worse. No. Yeah, I had them bring a dog to me. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> like fucking just yeah. Jesus Christ. I, I mean, like I say, I I, I shouldn't du- judge because you know, but nah, celebrities judge. we don't know so them it's personally, but I mean, from I what we gather, them, most of them it's like um, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I feel like I feel like there's some legit. Because the thing is, is like, <laughs> my mom said to me once. Because I was saying, oh, like, I don't know. I don't know if I can if I belong on set. Like, I, I booked a part in something. I had anxiety. Right. And she's like, Paris Hilton acts. And I was like, what? And she goes, Paris Hilton can can be in a movie. She's like, she does that, and she finishes. So she's like, do you honestly think you can't do what Paris Hilton does? And I was like, oh, I never thought about that. <laughs> like, it oh, never occurred to me I that, like, I could legitimately, like, I like, can. it was one of those moments where I was like, oh, yeah, I could probably fucking do that. I think the thing about, the thing is, is we make a lot of stupid people famous. And, yes. and, 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 and I think we continue to make, like, I posted this on, on uh, TikTok and uh, on, on Twitter today, and, and it's, it's kind of a small version of that. So I had a, I had a, a super hot woman uh, message me who was a fan. Um, yeah. Who's yeah. always a nice feeling. And she goes, Hey, I've noticed that you're having an issue with your, hey, your social media should be bigger. Mm-hmm. Can I help you? And I was like, I would love some advice. And she has like 500,000 followers on Instagram. She's one of those. Sure. Right? And she's like, uh, Can I help you? And I was like, I would love some advice. She goes, Okay. So uh, she's like, You got to post four times a week. And I was like, Okay. And, and she goes, <laughs> Well, yeah, that's what I do, and I have like five hundred thousand followers. She's like, maybe put like hashtag sundress or hashtag cute or something. And I was like, okay. And I'll, you look at what her Instagram is, and she's a nice person, but she's just legitimately unrealistically hot. Like she looks like someone drew her on a computer. Right. Yeah, yeah. And then and then I'm like, you don't understand. You, do- but at that moment, I realized I'm like, she has a disability, in that she is disabled, in that she does not understand how the world works. <laughs> Because her world is very different. If you are that good looking, man or woman, if you're that good looking, you don't understand how the world works. No, my, you don't my pay Instagram. You, don't, you know when you hit that you search wait. button on the Instagram and all those things come up? Yeah. yeah. For me, it's like uh, bikinis and puppies. And I, did, I didn't search either one of those things. Yeah. yeah. So mine's, I don't know what's going on. Mine's all vintage air cooled Porsches and yeah. uh, guys lifting way too much weight. <laughs> 
<laughs> can they lift it or yeah. they fuck up? No, they just it. fuck up. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know what that yeah. says about me. Is I and just that, want to watch weightlifting fails in old Porsches. <laughs> and that Tom Cruise impersonation prick. He's all over my <laughs> yeah, Instagram. Yeah, yeah, he's everywhere. I didn't ask him to be there. Guy. Do you have a Tom Cruise? Uh, no. I don't have a Tom Cruise either. No. Do you have any impressions, Mike? No, I don't really. You got to have something. They come out in, I don't know. You haven't got a me by now? You got a Simon King by now. I can't do it. No, not yet. I don't know. You know what you do? You you put a a plastic bag over your head and you scream in the dark until you pass out. (laughs) (laughs) It's pretty simple, dude. It's not a hard impression to do. Uh, oh my God! Well, we have we, five minutes left. We have five God, minutes did, left. Impressions. So you were mentioned. What did you mention earlier? Was it Michael Caine? What did you mention? Earlier? Michael Caine. That, that, that you were. That I, that I had a hard Caine? time doing. I figured it out eventually, but I had a hard <clears> time yeah. doing it because I'd never done one. Because it seems like one of those ones everyone does impression. Like it's one of those ones that everyone should do. Yeah. But most yeah. impressionists just don't bother because everyone no. does it. Like no. everyone, everyone at a bar can do a Michael Caine. Right. And yeah. I just never bothered to get one. And then when yeah. someone asked me to do it, I was like, oh, I should be able to do the easiest impression, but I fucking can't do it because I never <laughs> yeah. bothered to learn. Right. right? And so it's yeah. like one of those ones where I'm like, oh, I'll do a Killian Murphy. No one gives a fuck about that, <laughs> but they want a Michael Caine. And so like that was like, yeah. yeah, I find that that sometimes people will call on you for shit like sound alikes or something like that and you're like, I can't. I legitimately yeah. have to learn it. Right? Do you have a Michael Caine? Uh, when I first did a Michael Caine, it was actually um, uh, Howard Stern was on Letterman once, and he was telling a Michael Caine story. And then I saw him do Michael Caine, and I was like, "Oh, that's how you do Michael Caine." Oh, it was yeah. One of these, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, things. <laughs> and he was telling the story about that, that Michael Caine had come out with this acting video in like the early '80s or mid '80s, and it's like, <laughs> and it's they showed a clip of it, and it's ridiculous. I don't, I don't know where I don't know where he thought this was a good idea, but like he talks about blinking. <laughs> he has a whole segment on blinking. He goes, oh, "Now look at me. L- l- I'm gonna look at you right now. now look, if, if I come towards you and I'm I'm bl- um, not blinking, look at me. That's very intense. But look, l- look at the difference now. If I look at you and I walk and I'm doing this, it's very non-threatening. That's the power you lose." When you blink, <laughs> and it was. I want to get my hands on that video so bad. Oh, dude, we gotta find that. We gotta fucking find that. Michael Caine teaches acting mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. the eighties. Oh, that is Fuck, so man. good. That's good. There was one other one I saw, and it was Ian McKellen had a similar acting video that it, they showed it to us in acting class. Ian, Ian McKellen uh, Ian acting McKellen. Shakespeare. Ian McKellen, yeah, but it, yeah, that it's was when the, he's on like, that chair. That was the opposite. Himself, yeah, the opposite because it was yeah, like you're watching it going, he's this guy's phenomenal. Yeah, and he's, he's just intensely good. At the snap of fingers, he would do this Shakespearean speech and it's like, I... He's like young in it. Fine, like, Joel. Like 1980. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, incredible. Yeah, yeah. It's wow. incredible. He's, he's, my mom showed it to me and it was mind-boggling. I'm watching it just going, what the hell am I watching? That's when you realize acting is a craft. Oh, yeah, yeah, just like You were like, oh, shit, you have skills. It's not just some dip shit showing up and being like Supergirl you can't punch me <laughs> it's like oh, Supergirl man. you can't punch me for I'm invincible and she's like I don't want to punch oh, this guy I want to listen to Supergirl look, look at me blinking at Supergirl <laughs> Well, I'll take away Supergirl. your power well, if, you're, if you're blinking because like you've got that mask on right. Supergirl and blink right. I like to blink very like much to blink very Supergirl much. Hello. No, when I want to watch I'm just going to watch his blinking in every Batman oh, movie yeah. now. I am very, very sure that blinking at Supergirl is <laughs> there. Oh, see, that's good. <laughs> oh, Charles Xavier. <laughs> Really, you know, I did, did, Do you ever see that I did? Um, I did uh, Patrick Stewart singing the final countdown. We are leaving together, but still, it's farewell. <laughs> okay, it's, I got it. It's the final countdown. <laughs> oh, oh. I got a, I got a Patrick Stewart story. No, yeah. I was doing a convention in the UK, and they told me that this had happened on a previous convention there, and they go, uh, <laughs> Pat, both Patrick Stewart and. Um, and a bunch of other people were at the convention. And I guess, I don't know I don't know if he was having a bad day or if he's a little ornery at the conventions. I don't know. I've never met him personally. Right. <clears throat> but apparently, they set him up in the uh, hall, and he gets out there, and uh, he's like, it's too bright. It's too bright. <laughs> That's great. And they're like, Jesus, what are you, you're indoors. You know? yeah. like, I, I can't shine these. It's too bright. <laughs> Fine. So he takes off, and then they get a tent. Yeah. Inside to put up over him so the lights are it's not too bright. And literally he gets back in, he goes, It's too dark. <laughs> I can't see anything, it's too dark. 
<laughs> so they get him a little lamp to put under the cover that they just provided for him to block out the light. And apparently his big thing is he likes orange pop. That's his, in his rider, he goes, I need a case of orange pop. It could be Fanta or yeah, Crush. Uh, whatever it is, orange pop. Like orange pop. Orange <laughs> pop. So while he's finally soda. out there and happy in the booth <laughs> signing autographs, he goes to the green room and he has, apparently there was a big uh, clear bowl of orange pop with ice in it and it's cleaned out. And he gets in there and he's like, Jesus Christ, yeah. where's my orange pop? <laughs> I just specifically asked for an orange pop. Who the hell has taken my orange pop? And they said, <laughs> it was fucking Darth Vader comes in. <gasps> fucking <dead. laughs> Oh my God, why am I blanking the Darth Vader? Uh, David Prowse? David Prowse comes in sucking on an orange pop. <laughs> oh shit. Son. And he just looked at him and he goes, Jesus Christ. <laughs> So Darth Vader sucked uh, back his orange pop, and then that was it. I am orange pop. Yeah, and this is this is that's like the Logan. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I like, that's I, the I Logan do, Patrick I do, I do Stewart. Him old now. <laughs> I do some very Taco much. Taco Bell. I am very food, old, Logan, and I'm eighty years old. <laughs> and I had him on the Arnold Schwarzenegger podcast. Like, Tell me more about this movie you're in about the Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in, oh. Yeah, do but I'm I'm actually in a movie. I'm actually in a television show called Star Trek Picard. I like this one. The Picard is great. Is the CTP on this? <laughs> this Do you see footage lately of Schwarzenegger? Like he, they show him in his home, and he's hey, got he like a, fuck. He's, he's got, got, got like a baby donkey and yeah. a and a baby <laughs> horse. He goes, doesn't give a fuck. They're having breakfast with, yeah. the, with the donkey, and I you tell it, you you'll, don't eat it, all the cornflakes. Yeah. You will be you a hold fat your donkey. Flat. You feed them sardines. That's, they and like I it. love it. They will eat all of them. Is and he they, talking to a real donkey? In his yeah, head? no, they're in his home. If you follow, honestly no, follow him on TikTok, they're, they're Arnold not yard Schnitzel. animals. He brings them into his yeah, kitchen. No, that's that's his house. And the donkey's so, like eating out of the bowl because yeah. look at the, you, you're eating all the the cornflakes. On the, on the Pumpin' It podcast, we did an entire episode where Arnold kept getting distracted by a fat raccoon. <laughs> It's like completely I'm plausible. I'm sorry I left because I saw a fat raccoon outside. <laughs> yeah, you don't uh, always see a fat raccoon. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. You never see that. I was talking about that earlier. How you never see a uh, fat raccoon. And they will anymore. jump up yeah, on my was in jeans. Great shape. And the, the claws are very sharp. <laughs> and they will rip you. And they <laughs> give you the scar tissue. And the, it's not the, good. The hard thing about flipping back and forth is like you got to do oh, it like conversationally. It's like, I saw a fat raccoon in your pool. He look like a ball of leaves. Yeah, that's what they get. It's funny. I like Tracy Morgan. It's funny. Tracy yeah, Morgan like is very you right. funny. You yeah. get it. It's great. Yeah, that's I like insane. that. I'm going to lie down next to your pool. Just get some sun rays. Yeah, get yourself a suntan. It's awesome. <laughs> so you're I, I remember watching an interview with Tina Fey, and she did a quick impression of, uh, of him. Tracy Morgan. Tracy oh, Morgan. Fuck. And she's like, yeah, when you meet him, we'll fire out some just weird shit. Yeah. It's like... You look like the wife of a member of the St. Louis Cardinals. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? I was what the hell does car, that mean? I was in a car once with Gordon, and we're doing a road gig, and uh, and we just got we downloaded Tracy Morgan's uh, uh, "I Am the New Black." His audiobook, yep. Yep. read by Tracy Morgan. There's oh. no fucking way those are the words in that book. Oh, There's man. no fucking way. <laughs> Let me tell you about the first time I took a shit in a pool. Nobody wrote that. Right? <laughs> That's him making that. It is unintentionally one of the funniest fucking things you could possibly ever listen to. He's like, yeah, then I carried my dad down the stairs. He had AIDS. He was dying, but he was super light. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, Tracy. <laughs> uh, holy shit, we have... This time has flown by. I, I really, Again. really appreciate you coming by. I think I'm moving uh, in. Theater. I'm moving yeah, in. Yeah, it's it's going to be the three of us you now. Don't like like it, I said, jump out yeah. the window. It's, got, it's the um, Peatman uh, Simon <laughs> Clam cast. King class. King, King Clam cast. King the King Clam cast. Um... <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, watching and or listening to the podcast. Please find Peter Clem as you will not regret it. Um, and please find Mikey Greenwood uh, at the Fairmont um, putting um, uh, sheets on beds. And uh, please find me on uh, Twitter at Unfamous and at This Is Simon King um, pretty much on all the other social media. Like, rate, and subscribe. Please share this podcast. And, and We're uh, too purchase much fun. his uh, hysterical album that is uh, yeah, absolutely as good as, as good as or better than is my latest special. You destruction. Can, you can watch it. Uh, be one of the, the 12 people that's seen it. <laughs> 
12,000 people, motherfucker. Uh, 16,000. Oh, Actually, yeah. A lot. Them, half of them watched it 1%. It was bad. Um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Um, and uh, you know what? We couldn't do this without you. I mean, we could, but it would be just weird. <laughs> I mean, quite frankly, we don't know how many of you are out there, but, you know, uh, bonus episodes on Patreon.com slash This Is Simon King. And uh, thank you so much, Mikey Greenwood. Thank you. For thank our you. lovely new Greenwood Suicide Studios. Yes. <laughs> and Greenwood Suicide. That's what is Greenwood Suicide Studios. And uh, thank you to amazing people. Thank you, sir. One of my favorite. Just a and legend and an icon and, and you, uh, an you inspiration. Know, when you watch this, you could blink or not blink. <laughs> It's don't blink. You, don't you fucking release your blink. power when you don't fucking blink. Don't blink. <laughs> the Shibishi Spider. What was that? That's uh, what's wrong wall. this week.